We are joined by special guest, the creator of uh, JudicialWatch.org, a warrior for liberty and truth in America, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tom Fitton joins us on the Newsmax Hotline. Happy New Year, sir. How are you? Hey, Rob. Good to be with you again. Happy New Year. Absolutely. Um, today, of course, uh, January 6th, a, a day that will live in infamy. Kamala Harris is saying that it should stick in our memory like uh, uh, September the 11th, 2001 or, uh, or uh, December 7th, 1941. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, that sort of historical comparison by the vice president? Well, it's mindless propaganda. Uh, you know, they're obviously kowtowing or catering to uh, their supporters while attacking you know, 75 million Americans who didn't vote for them by suggesting that concerns about the election are the equivalent of being a terrorist or an insurrectionist. Or I didn't, this is new to me, uh, you're just like the Japanese attacking America. Uh, this is just incredible talk uh, between her and, and what Biden said. It was It was a vicious... Uh, set of speeches that I don't think really have much precedent in re modern American history. But I don't recall on uh, uh, January the 6th of last year that there were hundreds of people jumping from the burning capital to their deaths. I, I don't recall that happening, uh, Tom Fitton. Do you recall that footage? I'm not, uh, I'm not I don't. I do uh, recall there was a riot, and I do yes. recall several police were injured. I do recall uh, an unarmed woman was killed needlessly by the U.S. Capitol Police, shot. And I do recall that uh, security was lacking, and the person responsible for that security in key measure was Nancy Pelosi. And the person who wanted better security was the president of the United States, Donald Trump. All those are facts. It wasn't an insurrection. I call it a non-surrection. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, a protest that got out of hand and violent. And that wasn't well, right. Uh, mm -hmm. But riots happened because of or decision-making by those who maintain the public safety, in this case, the Capitol Hill Police. Now, we've got a, uh, uh, it seems to be a very political uh, attorney general. Uh, you guys have filed a Freedom of Information Act a lawsuit for uh, records related to the memorandum issued by Merrick Garland to go after parents who object to critical race theory in schools. Uh, how is that investigation going for you? And, and your thoughts on just where this came from and and i i believe there's definitely a pipeline between the national school board association the white house and uh, merrick garland what are your thoughts sir well that's been confirmed uh the yeah. letter was sent suggesting that uh parents criticizing crt were terrorists and it was during a very heated political season and the garland justice department jumped and uh tasked the fbi with using our uh anti-terrorist assets to target American citizens who are going out and speaking up at school board meetings. <laughs> and we asked for documents about that mess. We got the, the, the hand to the face, as I call it, yeah. uh, illegal stonewalling, failure to follow the law, and we're now in federal court trying to get the Justice Department to follow the law. The agency charged with enforcing the law breaks the law regularly when it comes to transparency. It has got to be frustrating for you, and I, I was just watching a video of yours, uh, 2020 year, the year of corruption, and there are, there are so many things, including this uh, January 6th select committee. Let me, let me ask you this, uh, Tom Fitton. Uh, if and when the Republicans win back both houses of Congress in 2022, um, what happens legally? Do you think the Republicans have the cojones to go after some of the corruption that has occurred in the last few years, particularly in the first year of the, of the Biden administration? No, oh, I think some Republicans do. I don't think the Republican leadership is uh, interested in doing anything aggressive on corruption issues. Uh, you know, I, I think in politics, unlike in investing, um, past performance is an indication of future behavior <laughs> and results. Yes, yes, that's perfect. <laughs> and I, I think, you know, with the current leadership on the Hill, Republican leadership, uh, we can expect more of the same. Now, there may be more and better uh, members of the House who are uh, Republican or conservative-oriented. And, you know, it's amazing. You don't really, in some ways, need the leadership if you've got committed members individually. I mean, for instance, Devin Nunes, all the work he did, you know, he was chairman of the Intel Committee and had some juice as a result of that. 
Uh, but he did that work despite protestations from his own leadership. So that's what uh, we need more of, independent, action-oriented members of Congress. Yeah. And, you know, so, so that's, that's what we should be hoping for. Um, we should hope for it now, let alone in two yeah. years. I don't want to wait until mm-hmm. next year before anything to be done. I think we need to be pushing now, honest members of, of both parties, frankly. And believe it or not, um, there is some bipartisan concern about the operations of government uh, that could result in some, you know, at least modest oversight. Yeah, yeah. I am uh, I'm a little torn on Ted Cruz this morning. Ted Cruz calling those who entered the White House, or I should say the Capitol, on uh, the 6th of January last year, calling them terrorists, and then talking about the possibility of impeaching Joe Biden once uh, both houses of Congress are taken over by by Republicans. Um, I had kind of felt like maybe Ted Cruz was someone we could depend on, um, but that the comment about terrorism and uh, and the supposed insurrection really kind of really kind of threw me for a loop, Tom. What what are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, my view is that you know things set in and around a traumatic experience like January sixth. Because you know, if you were on the hill and that, and you kind of were seeing that firsthand, I'm sure it was traumatic and people were emotional and overheated. Um, so you know, I, it wasn't terrorism, that's for sure. It was a riot. You know, yeah. and and uh, you know, calling it terrorism doesn't actually educate things. It doesn't mean that Cruz isn't otherwise doing some good stuff. Um, and highlighting the impeachment issue is something that needs to be done. Yeah, uh, certainly uh, Democrats would be doing it if the shoe were on the other foot. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about: the leadership. We just need leadership. Yeah. We're thirsting for leadership on these corruption issues and all tools available to um, congressmen and the American people. Uh, to hold government officials accountable uh, should be on, a ta- on the table. And, and the idea that impeachment would be ruled out is silly talk. And given Biden's uh, lawless approach to governing, it certainly has to be on the table. And also the two uh, faux impeachments that Donald Trump had to go through. I, I think it's time to take the gloves off, to be quite honest. Uh, Tom Fitton, I know you've been very busy. Uh, one other thing, are you still involved in uh, litigation and an investigation of voter fraud with regard to 2020? Uh, there have been some new uh, uh, breaking stories uh, still yet to be fully uh, investigated coming out of Georgia with regard to whistleblowers and ballot trafficking and, and ballot harvesting. Uh, um, are you still involved in uh, election integrity and uh, election fraud? Yes, obviously, we've been looking at that very closely. Uh, more recently, uh, we started pressing the states again uh, to clean up their roles. There were five yes. states, 14 counties that are on our uh, watch list. We sent them letters warning them that if they don't clean up the roles, they're going to face lawsuits. Yep. In New York City, they've removed I think about a half a dozen voters, I think I may be overstating it, over the last four years under the federal law that requires states to essentially remove people who are no longer active, people who have yeah. moved away. And I mean by, you know, I'm not talking they need to remove 100 versus 6. I mean tens of thousands. Oh, yes. Same in key counties in California, same in key counties in and around Portland. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think there were... The counties have a registration list of about 11 to 12 million, and amongst them all, they removed 33 people or so. And that's a crisis. <laughs> it is. It is. Tom Fitton, I greatly appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. I know you're very busy. I always look forward to uh, your announcements that I get in my email, what you guys are working for, and you just, uh, you're relentless, and I greatly appreciate it. I would encourage our listeners to do what they can to support judicialwatch.org. Uh, Tom, great to talk to you. Hope to talk to you again soon, sir. Hey, thank you, Rob. Have a great New Year. Absolutely. Judicialwatch.org. Judicialwatch.org. Absolutely make it a favorite. Check it every day. Get on their mailing list. It's awesome.